If you haven't tried Microsoft's new Copilot for Azure, I gotta tell you, it's amazing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how Copilot for Azure actually works, how it's gonna be able to help you in reducing your cost, and how it's gonna change the way you use Azure every day. So what exactly is Microsoft Copilot for Azure? Well, first you need to know what Copilot is, which starts with large language models or LLMs. That's a type of AI model designed to understand and generate human-like text. LLMs are trained on huge amounts of data using some kind of deep learning algorithms that helps them to recognize patterns in language and then generate contextually relevant responses which all basically means that they have all of the sum of human knowledge and they understand the context. But that doesn't mean that they actually understand anything that they're saying. And OpenAI made all of this really popular with ChatGPT, which I'm sure many of you have tried. Now, Copilot is built on GPT-4, and that's the latest generation of GPT as of this video. And if you have played with it, then you know how helpful they can be. Skynet is assuming control over global communications in preparation for its attack. Most of the time. So if that's already out there, why would Microsoft put Copilot inside Azure? And how is that going to help you? And that's where the second key to all of this comes in, and that is context. When you sign into the Azure portal, you should see Copilot right up there. And when you click on it for the first time, you might see this. And if you do, that means that your Entra tenant admin hasn't given you permission to use Copilot yet. Well, they can fix that by just searching for Copilot at the top and then enabling it for all users or click through and just enable it for specific users. When it's turned on, you'll get a quick walkthrough of what Copilot for Azure will do for you with a reminder, as always, to verify what the AI tells you. Because even though the AI has the sum of all human knowledge, it doesn't really understand what any of it means. At least, not yet. This also gives Copilot for Azure two bits of context. The portal page that you are on and you. Copilot actually runs inside your user context, so it can only do the things that you have the RBAC permissions to do, which is great for security. Notice first that during the Copilot preview, we do have some limitations. You can only take actions against 10 resources at any one time. You can only make 15 questions in any single chat, and you're limited to 10 chats in an eight hour period. So let's see what Copilot can do with something easy. How many VMs do I have and how many of them are deallocated? Now here, Copilot is showing us how it does most of its work, and that relies on the resource graph. Now the graph is what powers the search bar and all of the resource pages here that display things in the Azure portal. Now as to what the resource graph can actually do, well, that's controlled through Azure policy and your RBAC permissions. So again, Copilot can't do anything that you don't have permissions to do yourself. Now, Copilot not only wrote this resource graph query, but it's also gonna run it automatically for you and display the results. So I've got 17 VMs, seven of which are currently deallocated. So to recap the whole thing that's happening here, Microsoft took a copy of the GPT-4 LLM, stuck it over in Azure, and then when you open Copilot, it knows your context, which includes where you are in the portal, as well as the constraints of your policies and RBAC permissions. And then when you type into your prompt, Copilot will think about your request, generate a response, and like any good AI, Copilot for Azure has also given you some additional prompts to keep things going. So let's click on this one and see a list of my VMs. And that of course goes through the same process. Copilot will think about that and come back with the details about five of my VMs, including their power state. So here's a different way that Copilot can give you information. Let's ask a security and configuration question using normal conversational language. Do I have any storage accounts that have firewalls allowing traffic from the internet? If I do, what are their names? Copilot will think about it and bring us back a list showing here the default action, which is set to allow. And there's where traffic can come in from the internet if somebody has a SAS token. Now in the same exact way that 
you can click the like button on this video to let me know that you want more about Azure. You can also click here if you like or dislike the response and even give Microsoft feedback about Copilot to help everything improve. Now, I know some of you fear AI taking your job. You're fired. Or even taking over the whole world. But I think Copilot for Azure just became the admin's new best friend. It can not only give you information, but it can also do things for you, like repeating automated tasks, getting real-time recommendations for security and cost savings, or deploying new resources. And here's a few examples. The other day, I had a customer ask me how they can right-size their VMs. Now, in the past, I would have said that they need some historical data showing how the VM was used over time and then set up Azure Monitor on the VMs or even the Log Analytics Agent, which is going away soon, by the way. I hope you're ready for it. Then you'd store that data in a Log Analytics workspace. Then you can go look at the metrics for CPU, RAM, disk, and network, and you can try to guess if the VM is oversized or undersized. So let's see if Copilot can do this better. Look at the CPU and memory usage trend for VM DC01 over the last 30 days. Is it underutilized or overutilized. Okay, so Copilot here needs a little bit of contextual help. So we'll click here and select the resource that we mean, and I'll just search for my particular VM. Then Copilot will look at the resource graph, retrieve all of the metrics data, and it looks like this VM is really underutilized. So we can reduce our cost by resizing it to a smaller SKU. So let's see if we can get Copilot to help with that. I want to resize VM DC01. What size would you suggest based on the metrics data? Well, okay, that wasn't the answer I was hoping for. I wanted it to pick one of the sizes and then do the resize for me, but this is during the preview, so let's give it a chance to redeem itself. Let's look at one of these suggested prompts, like how can I resize my VM? Copilot provides here a nice step-by-step -step guide to go through the portal, as well as Azure CLI code snippets that'll check for the available size, deallocate the VM, change it to a new size, and then start the VM back up, which is all pretty convenient. And you can just click to run each section of those code snippets right here. But of course, you could deploy new resources as well, like this. Help me deploy a new VM. Well, the prompt is gonna go off to the LLM, think about it, and also think if I have the permissions to do that. And since I do, it's gonna ask which subscription of mine do I wanna put it in? And I'll pick that, and then I've got a deployment option. So I'll click the one that I want, and then continue. And that's gonna use the Azure CLI script. So all you need to do is just keep clicking the run buttons as you go through this process, and in the end, you will end up inside the shell of your new Linux VM and you can run any Linux commands here that you want to. And at the bottom, you can see the full script, and that way you can learn how to do this for yourself, start editing the code, and do some good automation. Now, of course, you can do all of these builds in the portal as well. Here in the VM section, just click right here to build a new VM, and right away, Copilot has some prompts here at the top to help you. Let's click on choose the right VM size for my workload. Well, of course, Copilot needs to know a few more things, like what is your workload? What is the number of CPU and RAM that you need? This VM will be for an Azure Virtual Desktop Session Host. It will have 15 users logged in at the same time. Each user will need half a CPU core and two gigs of RAM. And based on your answers, Copilot will offer you some suggestions. And I'll pick the uh, D8S V3. Now, I also know that this deployment needs to be highly available, but maybe I'm not quite sure how to make that happen. So let's pick this prompt and have Copilot help us out with that. And of course, Copilot knows that HA can be done with multiple VMs across different zones or a VM scale set, which is technically not directly supported in AVD yet. So let's go with multiple zones. And for VMs, multiple zones means you're gonna get multiple VMs, so Copilot makes you aware of that. And next, it looks like it wants to look at the networking tab. Now, since the context here, I'm in the Azure portal building the VM, Copilot is thinking about high availability, and in that context, that usually means some kind of load balancer. So Copilot wants you to pick between the app gateway 
and the Azure Load Balancer, and that's based on different kinds of specific traffic. Of course, AVD doesn't need either because of how the service works, so it's a little unfair to Copilot because I'm asking about AVD while being in a VM context, but let's see how it does anyway. And I'll just click to continue without picking anything. Copilot understands that I did not make a selection over on the left, but let's click OK. And then we have a choice to either review things and build or keep configuring. And I want to see how far Copilot can go, so let's click to configure, which looks like it wants to go to disks. Now, in general, it's a VM best practice to have one disk for your OS and then other disks for your data, which is certainly an option with AVD session host, but in this case, I don't really need one. So I'll just click OK to continue. And it looks like monitoring is Copilot's next suggestion, and it wants us to set up some alerts, which is a good idea because then we can keep an eye on our VM's performance. And these defaults are a pretty good place to start. And at the bottom, notice that we have a notification section, which can be just a simple email, or we can even pick an action group, which you would have had to have previously set up. And these can contain multiple notification methods as well as other stuff for opening support tickets. So I'll just select my group here and then click OK in Copilot. And we've got that same choice again, and I don't really know what else there is to configure, but let's see what Copilot thinks. And it looks like Copilot is satisfied that we've done everything that we can do. So let's just click to review. Now, it looks like that's a good reminder to us that Copilot, just like every other AI, you need to verify what it tells you. Now, earlier, Copilot understood that we did not actually select a load balancer option, but we didn't select none either. So the portal needs us to make a choice before we can finish the build. So I'll just pick none here, and then it looks like we've also got something on the basics tab. Now, Copilot never did ask us for a username or password for the local admin. So let's see if it can help us with that. Please generate a random 16 character password for my VM. Did I, did I think that worked. I mean, we got a password in the field. So how about this? Please type the same password in the password confirm field. Okay, not so much. I, maybe that was a password that was entered automatically by my Edge browser because I've typed it there before. Well, we can at least try this. Tell me the principles of strong passwords for Azure VMs. And that's good. We've got at least 12 characters, including special characters and password policies and some more links for us to learn more. So let's finish this build for now. And remember again, Copilot is in preview and this VM build experience is not normally the way that you would build an AVD session host. But overall, I think Copilot did a great job guiding us through the process in context. And we did get two VMs in the end with multiple availability zones and all of our alerts set up so we can keep an eye on things. Now, of course, the key to getting the most out of your AIs is learning how to write great prompts. And this is actually called prompt engineering. And as these LLMs become more sophisticated, knowing how to write prompts will become even more essential. Because remember, as I said before, AIs have all of the sum of human knowledge, but they don't understand any of it. Copilot cannot read your mind. So you need to be very specific in what you want. Take your time writing detailed instructions, see what the response is, and then you can use the feedback loop method. For example, you could just ask Copilot to tell you more about its previous response. Don't be afraid to experiment and see what works best. This will help you in refining your prompts so you can get back exactly what you're looking for. And what I do is actually when I find a prompt that really, really works well or one that I'm working on, I save that to a document so that I can keep refining it every time. Now, all of this is gonna start with a clear intent. For example, if you just say check performance, the AI won't know what you're talking about. Instead, you could try check the performance for this Azure VM in the last 24 hours. And you also need to have the right expectations because one word can change your results drastically. So if you want to know how to do something, use phrases like how to or create a guide. If you want something about uh, actions, then say generate, deploy, stop. And if you want to just get some info, then use terms like fetch, list, or retrieve. 
And Copilot can even help do some simple navigation for you, which you can do with phrases like show me or take me to or navigate. You can also tell it what your expertise level is so it can tailor all of that advice to your level of understanding, whether you're a beginner or an expert. So what are the limits of Copilot? Well, it is called Copilot for Azure. So if you want to know about stuff that's outside of Azure and kick everything into high gear in the AI world, you should really watch this video. And happy learning.